So right off the bat, uh, let's give a little background. Who are you? What do you do? Sure. Okay. I'm the founder and CEO of Own America. So this is a business that launched 10 years ago to help facilitate the investment boom that we figured would be coming on the other end of the housing crisis. I wrote a book back then uh, called Crash Boom. And the reason for the book, I'm not an author, so the reason why I forced myself to become one was that back then it was common to hear 96 times a day how we were in the middle of the greatest housing crisis since the Great Depression and how the market was never going to come back and how you should just you know, light a match and burn your house down because there was no point. Housing was horrible. And I just was standing above that saying, who's kidding who here? We have a boom coming. The deeper the crash, the bigger the boom. And just dedicated myself to understanding the housing market, became totally convinced now that I really, really understood it at the data level uh, that a boom was coming, wrote the book, started the business, and then landed a bunch of large institutional investors that maybe your listeners are aware that around six, seven years ago, Wall Street got involved in investing in the housing market, and they had never done that before. Nobody had ever tried to own 5,000 houses, much less 50,000 houses, as some of them have now. And so the whole process of identifying which markets to buy in based upon, in my mind, all the good fundamentals. Where is everybody moving, right? Where's the job trending toward, where, where are the job trends um, moving towards, where are the population trends going, where's the cost of living, where are the politics ripe so that it attracts business? All that kind of stuff became the basis of analyzing markets and then understanding how to analyze properties and then figuring out how to buy them and then get a hold of them and then get them fixed up and then get them rented out and then put them into a management queue so that you could actually, our clients did that. They, we were the friend of the spear on that in terms of helping them figure out where and what and how to buy and accumulate. And man, did it not give us a perspective on for, for the most demanding clients that are, that have ever existed in the housing investment business uh, that dot their I's and cross their T's and manage, you know, manage it and, and, analyzed down to the one hundredth of a penny, um, figuring out in that world of total transparency under the Wall Street microscope how to make this thing work. And the beauty of it, Avi, is that when it all came into focus, when housing had a chance to be put under that microscope, it worked so well that what people who were paying attention saw was so powerful in terms of a way to create wealth that we then spun it around and said, okay, we've now done this at the highest level if you define the highest level, the highest dollar clients, now we spun it around to everybody else. And our true passion, which are people like maybe some of the folks who are listening that are already investors or are aspirational investors, they want to be investors. You know, they have that real estate gene in them that says the best way to do this, the best way to secure financial abundance is to figure out the real estate game. Our whole mission in life is to provide all the best tools and techniques and data and know-how from the those bigger leagues and bring it out to the masses where I happen to believe the smartest things being done in real estate investing are being done by the entrepreneurs, but the big guys and gals had a lot of the best tools and toys. So now those are being offered to everybody else. So that's what own America is. It's a, it's a company dedicated to, you know, placing investors at the center of the universe and then providing all the tools and support that we can to help them do it. And here I thought I was the center of the universe. I mean, come on, Greg. I thought we had discussed this previously. I'm not. You hit a certain kind of... age. You hit a certain age, and you realize that you're not. You're close, <laughs> right. but you're not quite at the center. No, that's right. Uh, so Q4, uh, we're in Q4, thinking about the strategy for the rest of the year coming into 2019. And two questions for you: Where do you think the the, the housing investment space is going to be here in the next year? That's question number one. Okay, in the next year, we're stabilizing is what's happening now. It's been a little bit too hot for a little bit too long, meaning the buyers have been a little bit too rabid. The sellers have been able to elevate their prices a little bit too much, in my opinion. And so now you're seeing stories of um, home price appreciation slowing down. In fact, you know, we just talked about this last week. It's, it's becoming prevalent now where people uh, in the media are seizing upon the idea that the rate of appreciation is slowing down, mm. i.e., it's still appreciating. It's still worth more next month than it was this month, but it's not appreciating as much as it did last November, and so therefore we're in the beginning of a decline. That's all nonsense. It is still, in most parts of the country, an ideal time to be acquiring property. And um, and what happens in the next year is that you buy a property, you start collecting rent, and your property becomes a little bit more valuable. So that's that's like one year is like one second to me. 
All right. It just it just goes by before you know it. And the plan is really what happens over the next 10, 20, 30 years in your investment strategy. And that's why it's so important to buy a good property in a good place that has all the right fundamentals to elevate it over time. That's right. Um, and here's a question for you, just in terms of single family, uh, single family rentals, uh, something that I was asked via email, and I was going to save it until uh, a couple of a couple of segments later, as we kind of dug more into the, what's going on in the market. But the question really is, should I like, if I buy a property, I'm cash flowing two hundred bucks a month or three hundred bucks a month. Should I really pay attention to a saving that? Because what I know is at the end of the day, I might have to replace a roof and all of a sudden all of the rents that I've gotten over the last three or four years now go into this major expense and I see zero cash flow. Right. That's easy. That's an easy one. So here's the way the pros do it based, you know, kind of dovetailing off what we started the segment with. Mm -hmm. The way the pros do it is that before you get to the $200 a month, you're cash flowing. Tell me what your total rent is. If your total rent is $800 a month, you got to take $80 of that every month and put it in a side account. Yeah. And I don't care if you put cash in a coffee can, but get it out of your face, get it out of your accessible ATM checking account, because that's what, what the big guys do is take some percentage, and 10% is a really responsible one to do. 10% of, th of the rent coming in, 10%, it's their money, but they're putting it over here so that on July 18th, 2018, 2019, when the air conditioner in that, system, in that house goes down, and you owe $4,000, you have the $4,000 because you've been combing it aside on all the properties that you own. So yeah, you just do a set aside. It's your money. You just put it aside. Don't touch it until you have a repair or a maintenance issue, and then you tap into it then. Yeah, throw it into some interest-bearing account that earns whatever, 1.3% a year. Yeah, like, zero. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's just a matter of having it there so you don't, like you said, nothing's worse than collecting the rent, paying your bills with it, collecting the rent, getting your transmission in your car fixed with it, and then all of a sudden having a repair <laughs> bill on the house, and you have to tap into other sources of income to pay for the house's bill when the house was actually capable of paying its own way, but you had to do set-asides. That's right, and it was just mismanaged financially. Got it. We, I do want to ask about the 10 years, what the housing investment space looks like in 10 years, but we got to go to break. Um, what's the best way that our listeners, if they have any questions for you or if they just want to kind of pick your brain a little bit about uh, the knowledge you have in the space, what's the best way they can uh, reach out to you? Well, they can reach out to me directly at greg at ownamerica.com. Uh, but we also put a lot of stuff out on a podcast. We put a lot of stuff out on LinkedIn, um, all the social platforms. You know, we try to make the, the material native to the platform. So we're getting into Instagram, getting into Facebook. But really, the best stuff we're putting out is probably still on the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I've got years worth of stuff on the YouTube channel. So check out the Own America channel on YouTube.